name, right? It's right for you. Where? Well, I am. Mr. President, she knows that uh, about your quoting from her book and your Mother's Day radio address and tell her about your mother. Too. My mother heard the address, which was really a, a very sort of touching moment for her, I think, to, to be well, listening just kind of to your address and to hear you quoting from her, a book her own daughter wrote, <laughs> which was really a really kind of special moment for her. To forsake culture, country, prosperity, and peace. For crude living, poverty, adversity, and war requires a poise of soul few possess. Thank you very much. You know what, what I, I did want to sort of share with you, I've done a lot of speaking about this book, really across the country. And what has been so wonderful for me is really seeing the response that people have, have had to the book. It's really these women, their, their own memoirs and their words have really touched so many people, have brought kind of in me the tremendous pride in women and what women have been doing for so many generations. And well. uh, I think there's a, a real spirit of continuity that these voices of these pioneer women have really brought to all Americans. Well, you know, Yes, I'm, I'm an old cavalry Indian buff of those days. But I remember, uh, I don't know who it was, but it was someone, uh, and I think it was from abroad, not from America, that said in all the march of empire in the history of the world, this one in our country was unique. Because in all the others, it was the military who preceded and the settlers followed. And in this one, they bet everything, the family, their lives, mm -hmm. and they did, and the military really followed mm -hmm. after they had. And, and it was really very ordinary. Yes. And women together. Yes, people so mainly. Going ahead and forging their own futures. And, and mainly looking for a greater opportunity than the civilized places where they lived and prevented so far. That's right. Yeah. Mr. President, you should know that when I and the women in our office and publicly, I speeches about your record on women, we often quote mm -hmm. from this book. Mm -hmm. So it, well, it supports your, the strength that you believe in American women. Right. Well, we use it often. So I just, the understand. other day, I, somebody, you know, all the horse magazines, you know, they all send me the magazines now. And the one came that was from the gated ride. I'm not a gated horse man, uh -huh. but the people that ride gated horses. And I started leafing through it. And finally I got up and I went out to Kathy, my secretary, I said, I've got to show you this. I said, I now have discovered why you all live longer than men do. And I said, this just has to be the proof. And I opened the magazine and showed picture after picture of people riding these gated horses, you know, doing the five gates and so forth in the ring. And everyone, you look and here's a man riding and he's... <laughs> and then here are the women riding the horse. They're pleasantly smiling, having <laughs> the nicest time of all, and it was amazing. Every one of them, the men looked like you know, like we were in the nation, <laughs> and the women were all smiling beautifully. Probably feeling perfectly at ease. <laughs> That's right. Well, listen, I'm very proud to have this. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Give my mother your best. Okay, I will. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you.
The purpose of this gathering today is, following the memorial service that we've just attended, is to sign a proclamation declaring Sunday, September 11th, it's a national day of mourning. There have only been such, five such days proclaimed previously in our history, but I don't know of anything that would be more fitting in view of what we are mourning today, the tragic murder of those 269 people and 61 of them, our own citizens. So, about the news conference today that the Soviet Union had. Very, uh, not appropriate to this place. No. I haven't had an opportunity to, to uh, look into it or to hear it. Page after page, 
page pictures of people riding these wonderful gated horses, you know, in the show ring and the various horse shows. And every time it was a man riding, like this. And every time there was a woman riding, and every picture of a woman riding, she was sitting there smiling, <laughs> enjoying herself. <laughs> it looked like they were trying to do all the gates the horses were doing. Questioner from uh, the great state of Texas. Uh, with the president in Washington, D.C., our good friend Jim Baker, Chief of Staff of the White House. Jim? Thank you very much, Frank, for that kind introduction. Under your innovative leadership, the RNC is harnessing the latest technology to serve the Republican Party and the conservative principles which we all share. Teleconferencing multiplies the number of people that the President can reach with his message of optimism. So let me step aside now so the President can bring you the latest from Washington. Well, good afternoon, and my greetings to you all out there in beautiful Scottsdale. I'm delighted to speak with you about our challenge for 84 and how I know we can and will work together for victory. I just wish I could see your faces beyond this little red light because maybe you've been getting the same feeling I had in recent weeks and we're not going back to the mess from before. And let's make sure the American people remember there was indeed a mess dumped in our laps. When we arrived in Washington, we felt a little like no one must have the morning they left the mark, the ark, to begin over again. And we've been fighting this campaign, and you will probably be hearing them thrown back at you in the months ahead. Are you better off today?